welcome back to uh, the great whiskey review Independence Day <coughs> extravaganza of 2015. That's what I'm calling it now. Um, uh, and this is my third review, yeah, like within the last like half an hour. And it is the 20th review overall. What I have for you in this review is Wild Turkey's Forgiven. Uh, Forgiven refers to the fact that um, somebody accidentally blended wild turkey rye with wild turkey bourbon. Uh, and they decided to go ahead and release it. I'm glad that they did. Uh, this is actually the 2013 edition. So I've had this one. Actually, I just found this on my shelves at my local liquor store. It's batch number 302. But when I was uh, whiskey hunting here at the shore, um, I went to this big, huge, super liquor store. I just saw that there was a um, 2015 edition. So I thought that this would be relevant. Uh, there is um, a you know, a whole new edition out, and so uh, if you guys are uh, able to find that, I would go ahead and pick that up, but uh, for this one, I promised a bourbon. This is about as American as it gets right here on our Independence Day. It comes in at 45.5%, uh, which is 91 proof. You know, I, I, I don't understand, you know, Wild Turkey has made their, um, their reputation on a 101 proof system, and I can't for the life of me figure out why they release these things other than 101 proof. So they do this one at 101 proof. All the Russell's reserves are at 91 proof, I believe. You know, but if you want, if you want to do it right, or um, the the big new uh, one for the for Jimmy Russell's fiftieth uh, uh, anniversary, uh, that one was even at ninety one proof. I, I'm still toying on whether or not I want to buy a bottle. It's one hundred and twenty five dollars, and uh, the guys over at Bourbon Brother Reviews they reviewed it and. You know, they said it was really good, and I've had it at a at a whiskey bar, but I just don't know if I can pull the trigger on it. But uh, I'll, I'll give this away. This is another one of the whiskey review extravaganza today. Wild Turkey Rye 101. It's just, you know, Wild Turkey 101. That's what works. So... I know that you can. It's more cost effective to bring it down to this level, but it is the most authentic way to present wild turkey. So if you're going to do this, I mean, this is not a cheap bottle of whiskey, okay? And neither are all the Russell Reserves, and most certainly that Diamond Anniversary Edition is not cheap. So go ahead and make it 101 proof, and if people can't buy it because you can't make as much of it, well then fine. We can live with that. But it's just, 101 is like your trademark, okay? I did go ahead and buy this anyways. Um, it's a fantastic bottle. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repurpose this as a decanter maybe, or... Um, uh, a flavored oil uh, thing or or something. I mean, it's gorgeous. It has this beautiful wooden top on it, a uh, cork on it, and it's, I mean, it's really nice. Um, but that's just my spiel. I mean, 101 is your thing, so stick to it, okay? And 101, to be completely honest, would have made this a little bit better. Uh, for the nose... Right away, you get that cherry cola. You can tell that they charred the living hell 
out of these casks. Uh, I think that uh, somewhere on this bottle it says um, alligator uh, charring, which means that it's you know it's they charred it pretty deep into the staves. You get light brown sugar, and but this is a very very rye heavy. I don't even know if you call this bourbon. I guess it's more of a of a blend. Uh, I don't think that there is a certain way to either call this a bourbon or a rye, so I'll just keep on calling it a blend. Uh, you do get that nice rye bread characteristic. It is um, certainly spicy. Citrus zest uh, is uh, pretty prominent in the nose. And then fresh cherries. Uh, it's fresh cherry season right now, and we've been eating a lot of cherries, and uh, it's one of these things. You know, the, the cherry skins all the way down to the cherry pits. Uh, it's, it's a very cherry-forward expression, which is not a bad thing. It's really tasty. On the taste... The cinnamon spice right away it hits you right on the arrival. You get all the classic bourbon notes with this one. Probably because the white American oak is charred so hard. Uh, which I have no problem with that. So you get the brown sugar, the vanilla bean. Uh, there's a decent amount of corn sweetness in this. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like a 50% blend of wild turkey's rye and wild turkey's bourbon. I can't find that information anywhere. If anybody knows, can you please comment? But there is a corn sweetness to this, which is quite nice. There's also a nice licorice note, black licorice, so anisette, fennel. Um, yeah, all that. There's certainly a toasted coconut in here, which also comes from the barrel. But then you also get into the cherries. Maraschino cherries, which are basically just steeped in sugar water, but also uh, in the New Jersey area and where I live in Pennsylvania, uh, in early June every year, uh, and it's one of the times of the year that I look forward to the most is when sour cherries come out. It only lasts for about two weeks. And I make sure that I buy a ton of them because what I do with them actually is I buy quarts and quarts of them. And then I buy a whole bunch of rye whiskey and um, I pit the sour cherries or sometimes they're called pie, pie cherries. And then I uh, macerate them, I guess you would say, um, or basically just steep them in all the rye whiskey uh, for months and months. And that is usually my Christmas present to all the guys in my family. Uh, what happens is, is that all the characteristics from the sour cherries uh, meld into uh, the rye whiskey. And what you're left with is basically a very natural Manhattan. It is absolutely extraordinary. I would suggest that you guys do that. I think it would work with sweet cherries, Bing cherries, all of those ones. But it works best with uh, sour cherries. So give that a shot. The sour cherries have a very distinct flavor to them. A lot of people don't think that they're very palatable, so that's why they turn them into pie cherries. Whenever you mix them with sugar or something like that, it brings out, uh, it's all, I mean, it's as umami as a fruit can be. Uh, and, the, and the rye really brings that out. So the whiskey or the alcohol within the whiskey breaks down, uh, breaks the cherries down, and it releases all of its really delicious flavor. So a lot of that is going on in here. I can only assume that this product would create a 
in amazing Manhattan. But this bottle costs forty dollars, and I'm not going to make a Manhattan from a bottle of whiskey that costs forty dollars. Okay, you save that for your written house rise or even your overholds. Uh, but anyways, overall, this is a rye-heavy bourbon that has more rye than anything else and it is a little too pricey it's also not at a hundred and one proof like it should be but you know I'm just I'm not gonna drive that in it it's just it just makes sense to me so uh, this one gets an 86 from me there's a brand new edition out if you find it go ahead and buy it please tell me what you think about it uh, happy Independence Day. I'm going to do another review here shortly after I watch this one. And we will continue to have a very nice Independence Day. So, uh, Dan signing off. See you soon.